Workplace injuries are declining. Although there is reason to celebrate this, there's another trend that is more disturbing. The number of life-altering injuries or fatal incidents has been much slower to decline. Why is this? You may be familiar with Heinrich's Pyramid. Heinrich theorized that for every major injury or fatality, there were 29 minor injuries and 300 non-injury incidents. Though this model has been very useful as a safety tool, it has a flaw. It treats all non-injury incidents as equal, but are they? Would you investigate all of these non-injury incidents with the same energy? Let's look at an example. A forklift carrying three lumber packages spills them across the main designated crosswalk. No one was on the crosswalk and no one was injured. Let's look at this from the point of view of the potential for a significant incident or failure, or SIFP. This approach acknowledges that not all non-injury incidents have the same risk or potential for a significant incidents that could result in a more serious injury or even a fatality. A fraction of the non-injury incidents that occur have a much higher potential for SIF. Identifying and controlling these precursors can significantly reduce SIFs. Does our example have SIF potential? There are a couple of questions that we can ask ourselves. Had the circumstances been slightly different, could the event have reasonably resulted in serious injury or a fatality? And, if the situation was repeated a dozen or 100 times, is it reasonable to conclude that the outcome would eventually be a SIF? If the answer to either of these questions is yes, then we consider this a SIFP. In our example, what if there had been a person on the crosswalk? If this had been repeated numerous times, do you think that eventually there might have been someone on the crosswalk when the incident occurred? In other words, is our example a SIFP incident? The answer to our two questions is yes, and we can conclude that this incident should be considered a SIFP. We can then use our incident investigation processes to determine the root cause of the incident and apply appropriate controls. Let's look at some examples of categories or buckets in which incidents could occur in our industry. We'll explain these buckets in more detail in another video. Is it a SIFP if there is an excessive accumulation of wood dust even if no combustion occurs? What about if errors in lockout procedures occur even if no one was harmed? How about if someone trips near the edge of a platform at a height without a safety harness and without actually falling from the height? Is it a SIFP if a piece of equipment is backed into a shed support post and the roof partially collapses, even though no one was in the shed? What if a forklift is pulling packages from overhead and drops the load, narrowly missing a pedestrian in the area? Is that a SIFP? Is it a SIFP if someone's loose-fitting glove was caught in a moving pulley, even though the person's fingers were not caught and no injury occurred? Would it be a SIFP if a small fire occurred even though someone extinguished it before it got out of hand? What about a load that hadn't been secured properly when lifting with a crane and the load dropped locally without anyone in the way? Is it a SIFP if a shifting load on a barge resulted in someone losing their balance and falling overboard even if no injuries occurred? Would it be a SIFP if when moving a hazardous chemical, the liquid splashes but doesn't get on anyone? What about if a supervisor saw a worker touch a circuit before testing if it was live, even though it wasn't live? Is it a SIFP if a worker enters a confined space temporarily to retrieve a tool without a permit? Each of these incidents, if repeated numerous times or if conditions had been slightly different, could have resulted in a SIF and so are worthy of elevated actions beyond the investigations. What if none of these were investigated? Over time, the likelihood of one of these events resulting in a SIF is increased. Reporting on SIFP helps share learning to prevent these SIFP events from resulting in SIFs. Employers are encouraged to share their learnings from SIFP events with the rest of the industry by forwarding their alerts to BC Forest Safety for distribution in their weekly manufacturing safety alert process. Sending these as soon as possible ensures that the message gets out to everyone to avoid further incidents. What's next? Consider setting goals to report and thoroughly investigate all SIFP events to prevent the occurrence of a similar event. Evaluate the SIFP events your company has experienced in the last year. 
measure the tally of each CFP over time and refocus on incident types that are not declining. If an incident occurred where there was the potential for a significant incident or failure, did you do what is required so that this potential is not realized at some point in the future?